in the long run what is the most important things that actually contributes to success in any business is not usually necessarily the the superficial aspects of like what industry you're you're going after it's really really important to have communities of people around you that are doing similar things that you can mm bounce ideas off and like i love the quote you know like a, a rising tide lifts all boats like when you're mm-hmm. when you're surrounded by people that are on the same path a few steps ahead of you it's like it's impossible to lose i don't want like my income or anything to be reliant on like external factors and like someone else's business i don't want someone else's business to go down i don't want someone else to be in control of how much i make and i want like my effort to be directly rewarded mm-hmm. like i want the amount of money to my that i make to be directly proportional to the, the amount of value i'm You've providing the amount control, of effort yeah. that i'm putting in and so i'll just like all right fuck it i'm just gonna make this work and do my own thing now all right guys you're tuning in to before the money and i really want to bring some value today And I'm sure my guest is going to do the exact same. But before we do that, can you please do us a favor and help us grow this show? So wherever you're listening to this, try and find that subscribe button. Make sure you click it. Uh, I was looking at the Spotify wrapped today and our subscriber base has skyrocketed the last couple of months and it's all because of you guys. So wherever you're listening to this, if you're a first time listener, find that subscribe button. Make sure you don't miss a single episode because we release every single Wednesday and on that note as well i want to get stuck into today's episode because like i was just saying off air with our guest is i've been following this guy's journey for five years now i didn't realize it had been that long but we've been having that conversation and to see the contrast of where he started five years ago is so uplifting and inspiring because i get to see him where he is now and I'm going to uncover that that contrast for you guys today and there's going to be some really awesome lessons, some cool stories and so I want to dive into this one. So, he's a digital marketer, he's an online entrepreneur, he is the founder of the agency Reliable Leads which is providing, as the name says, leads and marketing services for real estate agents and that niche. He's been running it for five years and they are now generating $80,000 a month. Like, let's just clap for that for a second. He's also a coach. He's giving back to a community. He's he's giving away his secrets to how he's built this life and how he's built this business in his Scale Matrix coaching agency, which is a mastermind, a community for agency owners to essentially follow in his footsteps to a certain degree, but also build their own impact in the world. You know, he's helped over 200 agency owners build a freedom lifestyle, the life of their dreams, the life that they don't have to take a vacation from, which is super powerful. But like I said in the beginning, this person has been relentless on his pursuit to build the dream life over the last five years. And I'm sure we're about to uncover probably a lot longer before that. And so, that's the real reason why I wanted to get him on the podcast today because... The entrepreneurial journey is, it's not clean cut. It is ups and downs. It is a roller coaster, but roller coasters are also fun as they are terrifying. So, let's get stuck into it. Liam Casey, thank you so much for coming on Before the Money, brother. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to do this one. <laughs> yeah, 100%, bro. It's a beautiful rainy day outside. So, we're sitting here in Electric <laughs> Sugar about to lay down some bars. So, let's paint the picture. I've given them a brief overview of where you're at currently. It barely scratched the surface. So, what are you doing? How are you earning your income right now? Yeah. So, essentially, like the main business that I've been working on for the past five years, which is the majority of the cash flow, is the social media marketing agency. And so, that business model is pretty simple. It's the same across like lots of different industries and niches. You're working with clients that are paying you for social media marketing services and those services help those clients grow mm-hmm. their business and get customers. And so, um, from day one, I kind of always s- started out in the real estate industry just because like that made the most sense to me when I first started out. And just because, you know, I started in that industry initially, I just didn't want to start from scratch in a, new, in a new niche and thought it made the most sense to build on top of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what we've been doing ever since. And so, like in, in a nutshell, um, for the real estate industry, the way that they make their money is from selling houses. And mm-hmm. so, they have a problem of finding people that need to sell their houses so that they can sell houses. And so, we mm-hmm. run ads on social media um, to help them get 
get people to yeah. inquire that are interested in selling their house and there's a lot of other stuff that go that goes into that into that but that's it in a yeah. nutshell um and so we've gone through lots of evolutions of the types of services that we offer to help achieve that result but that's been the main thing for the longest time yeah um, you yeah. said something there um you started off in the real estate niche and yeah. you didn't want to waver and start from scratch and i feel like you brushed past that a little bit but that's actually a very very key point and i talked about this in, in last week's episode like when we chop and change, we essentially have to start the process from scratch. You know, we have to then build momentum. We have to understand the avatar. We have to do all the heavy lifting up front only for us to then get to the point where we're just about to break into orbit to then swap swap our offering again. Yeah. That is a, a problem that I put myself in far too many times. Yeah. And it was essentially just like working on a hamster wheel you don't really get the chance to gain that momentum. Yes. Were you conscious of that insight then or are you just really <laughs> connecting the dots looking backwards? Um, a bit of both for sure. Like yeah. now because because I've also like moved into coaching and mentoring other agency owners and that's like been one of the most helpful things for myself as well because being able to teach and analyze other people makes you realize so many things about your own decisions mm. and everything that you've implemented for, your, for yourself and you have to kind of, you know, figuring out what advice to give people forces you to reflect on, well, what did I actually do to get, mm. to, get to the point that I'm at? And sometimes you don't even, you don't even think about it. Mm. And then if you're not thinking about it, then you don't actually know how to repeat your own success and you can kind of second guess yourself. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that in a lot, uh, in a lot of these online business models, shiny object syndrome is the biggest thing that that holds people back because mm -hmm. there's so many opportunities and the way that people get introduced to these business models is like through a context of you know the typical get rich quick type men type mentality yeah. and so it's very easy for people to be pulled away to explore new ideas because that's how they kind of got introduced to the to a business model mm -hmm. in the first place um but in the long run in the long run what is the most important things that actually contributes to success in any business is not usually necessarily the the superficial aspects of like what industry you're you're going after or what specific service you're offering but more the the fundamental skills that go into the business like mm -hmm. how to acquire clients like how to service clients like how to manage a team like how to mm. find good talent and all of these skills are things that you learn that are independent to, you know, which which niche mm -hmm. am I going to go after or what, you know, what type of business am I going to start? Um, and when you're chopping and changing all the time, you're kind of making progress in multiple different directions. Whereas if you just like stick to one thing for long enough, then you're making, you, you make everything compounds and you make a lot more progress a lot, a lot more quickly. And so I definitely wasn't super strategic about that at the start. And I kind of just did that by accident also because I was, relatively stubborn and just didn't want to <laughs> didn't want to change i was like i'm yeah. just gonna make this thing work um but yeah that's extremely important yeah that's a good mentality because uh, i feel like it's a it's a comfort thing like i'm sure if you came up ag up against a couple of like quote unquote failed sales calls i'm sure the story would have been coming up in your head like oh maybe this is the wrong niche all this yes. kind of stuff and it's very easy to give in to that because like you said there are so many opportunities yeah you know you go onto youtube and there's like 30k in 30 days exactly. like trade options <laughs> like earn money while you sleep all this kind of shit yeah. and they yes there are like methods to do these kinds of things but what they don't talk about in a lot of these opportunities is like it might take you 12 months of super consistent work to make 30k in 30 days you know yeah they don't really talk about the the backstory because you know there are and they use case studies of look at what happened to this particular client that's one out of 600 people yeah. <laughs> in my books yeah um so that's interesting dude so when you decided to start the coaching business what position were you in at that stage with the agency yeah. i was doing about 25 30k a month yeah. pretty consistently and i'd been doing the agency for just under two years mm -hmm. um and that's when I first decided to get into it just because I like initially it was actually at the time was probably a bit of a, shi a shiny object because like I saw lots of other people doing it and 
again, like the way that you get introduced into these online business models is from like someone else's course and coaching program. And you know that they're making a lot of money from those courses and programs. And it's, it's a great business model. And it's also really good for your own personal brand to create content, mm-hmm. to, you know, get people to, to buy your coaching programs. And it's also beneficial personally, just like actually going through the process of coaching and mentoring others. So, that's why I got into it initially. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's good to have a community around you as well. You know, yeah. lots of the times we sit here like working on it and we think our problems are unique to us. Then, yeah. you know, you've got a community and like a mastermind, like you said, where everyone can bounce ideas around and that's a, it's very fulfilling. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. And I especially like in online business models because <clears throat> we're, we're working remotely and we're working from home and it mm. can be very lonely like there's no one like you just work you just <laughs> in a, you're just in a, yeah you're just in a room like you have lots of zoom calls all the time yeah. but you're just in a room working by yourself and that's like on entrepreneurship and online business the majority of the time it's just you alone in a room yeah. writing stuff making yeah. content talking to people on zoom calls and it's really really important to have communities of people around you that are doing similar things that you can mm bounce ideas off and like i love the quote you know like a, a rising tide lifts all boats like when you're mm-hmm. when you're surrounded by people that are on the same path a few steps ahead of you it's like it's impossible to lose if you're constantly mm. actually exposing yourself to that so it's really important. yeah like um alex hormozzi talks about the the concept of our standards a lot and yeah. like when when we're surrounded by people who have a certain standard like we are going to fall to that level because we can't maintain our highest effort all the time, you know. But a hack that we can do is we can set our base standard at a very high level by leveraging our environment. You know, if you're hanging around people that love spending their money on in nightclubs and all that kind of shit and they're not on the weekends, they're not like working towards their goals, then you're not going to feel guilty if you're doing the same thing. But if you're surrounded by people that are encouraging you, they're pursuing their dreams, they're doing things that are out of the box, out of the ordinary, then your base standard is going to be set to that level. You know, it's just a standard that I work on Sundays because I have a clear vision of where I want to go. And it's not necessarily like you've changed. You're just leveraging the psychology of your environment. And it's super powerful. Like, what was that like for you in terms of friendship group? Did you have people in your ecosystem that were entrepreneurial? Um, not at all. Like, I I don't even know where it started, but I early on I kind of had an idea that I knew that I wanted to be a business owner just in general. Mm. Like, even in high school, and I had no idea like what that was going to look like, but. I just always knew that I was going to have some kind of business and I was going to work for myself and I'd never even considered having a job as really an option. I ended up going through university and I kind of like somewhat considered it as a in the meantime thing once I, if I was, if I hadn't hadn't figured something out, but I always like had that as a personal standard that I was long, my long-term plan was never to work for myself. And mm. um, I think maybe part of that could have been influenced from my parents because both of my parents are, are business owners and um, that definitely in- inspired me. But mm. like the very first thing that I ever did to actually like, take action on on entrepreneurship was in high school. And I, I got some random ad for a um, like a startup entrepreneurship event at, the University of New South Wales Mm -hmm. um, in Sydney. And it was like a weekend event where you go and they just like throw you in a room. They put you in a group with some random people and you have to come up with a idea for a startup and then you have to create a business plan for it and then pitch the business plan in front of a panel of judges. And Mm. you like, there's, there was like a prize and um there was a plan that like the winners of the contest would go into this other one and you'd get like to pitch in, in a in front of a panel of investors. And that was like the first thing that I did that was actually like taking action on online, online business or not online business, just business in general. Um, and it was the first ever thing that I did that gave me some kind of like recognition or validation for work in that space because mm-hmm. obviously the way that society in the school system is set up is not to it's like purely only to reward pretty much achievement in academics or like sport and so there's no like cultural feedback or like recognition to get into 
running your business. It's mm. just kind of like, and, and even when you do it, I, spe- I feel like especially in Australia, it's not much um, like social credit, like it, it, to, to starting a business. It's, yeah. it's like people, like it's interesting that when I, when you post a, a picture of you graduating a degree, everyone's like, congratulations. Oh my yeah. God. Like, that's amazing. You when, did it. That's when, amazing. When really like you're in debt, you've actually achieved next to nothing. And it just is like something that people are programmed to congratulate. But if you like announce that you're starting a business, mm. you'll get like a 10th of the, the likes and, and support. Um, and so- Yeah, it's like, what's he doing trying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that, that um, first like weekend startup competition that I did was like the first kind of thing because we ended up winning that, that competition and oh. we got some money for it. And then that was like a whole kind of six month thing. Made it we, real for you. Yeah, it, yeah. Made, it made it real. And um, and that kind of started it, but it wasn't, it wasn't until, because I went into into university after that and hadn't really figured anything figured anything out. And it wasn't until like halfway through my degree that I kind of stumbled upon the early YouTubers in the day in the social media marketing space. What were you studying? Um, I was doing a business management degree and I, I did that. I finished that degree and yeah. did and majored in um, advertising and international business. So, did you find that relevant to like the work you're doing now? I did like six months of a marketing degree. Yeah. And I don't think they ever taught me any kind of practical marketing principles. Like, yeah, I mean, I only did the first six months though. So, yeah. I can't really talk into it too much. Well, I think it's, um, I think. Like I wouldn't change anything about yeah. what I what I did. Like one university was really fun for me. Like I met it was a really fun experience. Yeah. Met a lot of cool people, partied a lot, um, and I didn't have like any other better ideas at the time. Yeah. So I was like, I know I wouldn't have done anything different in the situation that I was in. But the the context of way they the context of the way that they teach business in university is not like in the context of if you're going to be an entrepreneur it's inside of business yeah it's like if you're going to be a manager or if you're going to be working in like an executive level Mm. advertising agency like the the type of advertising agency that is doing national campaigns for mcdonald's australia Mm -hmm. or toyota australia and things like that and so it's a completely different process than being taught how to run your own business or like mm-hmm. you know run facebook ads or things like that it's a lot more high level and i think it was it was a definitely a good experience to see how strategy is structured at those, at those really high levels mm-hmm. um and i think just in general what probably the most valuable thing that i took out of university was just the skill of learning mm-hmm. because i think that's one of the biggest things that that people struggle with when getting into online online business is that there's all of these incredible like courses and coaching programs out there that but people don't actually know how to learn and be persistent like the the amount of coaching that I've done up until this point it's really shocking to see mm-hmm. the amount of people that will pay thousands of dollars for a uh, an exceptionally valuable course or coaching program and they just don't even watch any of the training or they just don't show up mm-hmm. and even when you're in university you like notice that the majority of people aren't showing up to lectures and um going through the motions of just being forced to consume a large amount of information, remember it, apply it, mm. pass subjects, show up and, le- and learn things. Like, it, that's exactly the same in online business and people have, like, such short attention spans and they don't realise what it takes to actually, like, consume information, learn it, apply mm. it, under- understand it. Um, and I think that, yeah, going through, like, sticking out a degree, doing it for yeah. like a, a three degree, you know, passing all, all your subjects... Um, I think that's like a big ingredient to success in online business is just l- knowing so, how to learn. How how does how does someone like learn effectively so that they can apply? Well, one like actually consuming the content that they've got access to, like yeah. just actually taking the time to like if you if you like number one if you're wanting to learn any online business model, just like take someone's course that's already done it. Like that's the simplest thing, and you know, even if it's a few thousand dollars, like it's, it's worth it. Do mm. it. Like I've spent a ridiculous amount on coaching and, um, and mentorship up until this point. Yes. You can learn a lot like for free online, but do that up until the point where you can kind of like take some, takes taste some, some success, then pay for someone's, um, someone's program. And then you're paying for that accountability as well. Really, <laughs> yeah. You're you? paying for accountability. And also like, I think that especially when you're getting into an, into any business model, most of the time, you haven't like invested 
um, any significant amount of money into yourself and then you have a lot of Im- limiting beliefs around accepting money from other people. Mm. I see like that happens so many times where people have imposter syndrome or they they have a ridiculous amount of lack of confidence or conviction in their own products or services or what they're trying to sell because they haven't invested heavily in themselves first mm. and so like you have to kind of get over that get over that hump um but literally just like number one is like yeah get get someone's program and then actually like watch everything like mm. just actually watch everything even watch just, it more than once yeah just really like take, <laughs> just take notes because like that's the number one thing that most people don't do yeah. is they just don't even consume all the content that they've got access to all the training they've got access to and then actually just show up for the support that you've got access to like most mm. programs and and things like that have you know coaching call weekly coaching calls like i do i've been doing weekly coaching calls in programs for the longest time and the majority of people will not show up for mm-hmm. for a weekly call and that's like the most valuable thing that you can do is like everyone has problems in mm. their in their business and they won't even show up to just like ask questions because for whatever reason so it's mm. just like actually showing up just consuming what you've got in front of you actually taking the time to learn it um showing up and then just implementing (laughs) yeah it's pretty simple yeah that was that was one thing i was going to add there like the sooner you can take action on what you've just learned the better yeah because you know then it it builds the confidence like when i first learned sales stuff i was avoiding making sales calls yes and a lot of what i learned just went in one ear and out the other because I wasn't implementing. I wasn't building it into my muscle memory. Yeah. I was just like procrastinating on knowledge, really. Um, so, yeah, definitely the sooner you can implement what you've just learned, the further cemented it is. And like, you know, even add another layer to that. Teach it what you've just learned mm. to mm. someone, even yeah. if it's just your girlfriend or your boyfriend, like sit them down and teach them what you've just learned in that hour long lecture or whatever. Yeah. And then you're going to, number one, learn how to articulate. So, therefore, it hits multiple parts of your brain and it's going to, you're going to get that quick win. You're going to get that dopamine hit because, you know, you're helping someone else as well. Yeah. Really interesting because I I see the same thing. I've been a part of so many courses, heaps of masterminds and shit like that. They're paying tens of thousands of dollars to be there and yet they're not there. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I don't get it. But that's like, that's the majority. And there's always like a direct correlation between the people that end up being the most successful are the ones that show up the most mm-hmm. and on the most, on the most calls that are asking the most questions. Mm. It's just like, you see it all the time. It's like, whoever's showing it the most, they end up making the most money. It's like, it's very straightforward. <laughs> yeah, wicked. So, you found um, digital marketing through an ad, did you say? Or through yeah. someone's Yeah, so source? like, it was literally um, when... Ty Lopez was was blowing up with yeah. the, with the here in my garage ad was like <laughs> look at my Ferrari he like he pretty much founded the whole SMS uh, SMMA like social media marketing yeah. agency space and um he kind of came up with the first course and program of that and then the first person after that that I came across was um was one of Eman Gadsy's ads and he had he'd, he'd been doing it for maybe like only a year um, he would have been very young still at that stage yeah so. yeah it was literally like late late 2017 mm-hmm. early t- early 2018 it was like when he had his very first ad- agency program um and that was like the first one that i got and i didn't actually like take action immediately the what what the kind of process that le- led up to it was i was just trying to find something to do while i was at university that i could like make money from that gave me mm-hmm. some flexibility that i could just do in the in the meantime w- without having to get a job mm-hmm. um because i i for whatever reason it was just like really hard finding and like keeping a job mm-hmm. while i was at university um and i'd got like all of these different random random jobs like i worked in a call center for a bit and then i um and then i left that because i can't i can't remember why but then i worked in a um doing like a manual labor job replacing mm-hmm. shelving in Woolworths like around Br- Brisbane like you do overnight shifts mm-hmm. replacing all the shelving and that was like absolutely horrible <laughs> and so I left that within like a couple of days and then and then I went and did a um like an in-person sales job you know those people at, at shopping centers that like oh. try and stop you and sell you the raffle tickets and shit yeah i did i, I did that for a bit and it's like <laughs> those those companies are so dodgy like they completely bait and switch you into those yeah. into those roles um but i did that for a couple of days and that was actually kind of a 
a good um, introduction into sales. For Builds just a like, thick skin. Yeah, like <laughs> like it's probably the harshest sales you can do, stopping people in the middle yeah. of a, like just cold approach. Um, but I absolutely hated that, and so I, I stopped that within a couple of days, and then um, and then I I got a job at like a retail job at a Roger David selling suits, and then within about within a week of like getting that job that company announced that they were closing down and so that was like the final straw for me because i'd mm. had all of these jobs like consecutively just like trying to get something that i could just ha- make a bit of money in while at, while at uni and then i'd had all these shitty jobs and then like i finally got one that was like oh this this will be good like just for my final year to finish and then they like announced that they were closing down and so that was like the final straw for me just to go like i'm just gonna do my own thing because mm. I, like, believe more. I, I don't want, like, my income or anything to be reliant on, like, external factors and, like, someone else's business. I don't want someone else's business to go down. I don't want a, someone else to be in control of how much I make. And I want, like, my effort to be directly rewarded. Mm-hmm. Like, I want the amount of money to my that I make to be directly proportional to the, the amount of value I'm You've providing, the control. amount of effort yeah. that I'm putting in. And so, I was just like, all right, fuck it. I'm just going to make this work and do my own thing now because I'd kind of been dawdling with it for a bit. Um, and then that's when I kind of just took it seriously and started going through courses, taking action, building it up. Wicked. Yo, so I just checked our statistics, right? It's not something I do very often, but I was blown away. Our subscriber base has exploded over the last few months. So I want to thank all of you who have clicked that subscribe button. You show up to the episodes every single week. You support, you participate, and you take action for yourself. And for all of you who haven't subscribed yet, you want to be part of the club, go ahead and locate that button on whatever platform you're listening to this on. The subscribe button is usually pretty bright. If you want to be notified every time we drop a valuable episode and while you're on a roll, why don't you go ahead and leave behind a five-star rating. Let us know we're producing value because we're going to continue showing up and doing our thing every single week, bringing on high-value guests and sharing unordinary stories of how they got there. So if you're an action taker and you don't want to miss out on an opportunity to gain valuable knowledge that's going to propel you towards your success, go ahead and click that subscribe button and let's get stuck back into this episode. You've just given us the run up. You're now sick of having your future in the hands of other people. Yes. You know, you've been sleeping on this digital marketing thing for a little while. You're obviously ambitious. You've been because the ecosystem of entrepreneurship has found you. Yes. Right? So you obviously have those tendencies. Talk us through that initial kind of transition into that. Like, as I, I remember fondly. The first time I was doing online business, mm. my first sales calls, all these kinds of things, they're terrifying in the moment, you yeah. know, to a certain degree. But talk us through that transitions, the shortcomings, the roadblocks, all that kind of stuff. I'm super curious. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the way that I started was literally just like I, I went through courses and then I kind of settled that I was going to do something for the real estate, real estate niche. And then um, I kind of just got into the point where I understood what the service was, what we were offering, like how Facebook mm. ads work and things like that. And then it kind of came to, okay, well, we've got to get clients now. So, what do we do? And mm. um, before that, yeah. how did you settle on the real estate niche? Well, it was one of the ones that was just talked about in the in the first courses that I went through. And that industry made the most sense because, you know, in the marketing agency business model, you've either got like local business lead gen niches or you've got e-commerce pretty Mm -hmm. much and at the time um e-commerce wasn't as popular like five five or six years ago um in terms of a niche for for agency owners and the fulfillment for local business lead gen clients is a lot more simple because Mm -hmm. like yeah e-commerce is just a lot more complicated in terms of your level of expertise and understanding to get results for an e-commerce client Mm -hmm. just because this it's yeah the standards are a lot is a lot higher and you're optimizing for actual like conversions and sales there's a yeah there's just mm. a lot more going on and local business lead gen it's just a lot simpler because you're gen the result that you're generating is someone completing an application or completing an inquiry um and it's usually a lot less a lot less competition and so the in in the in the different um local business lead gen niches you've kind of got like restaurants you've got um gyms you've got Dentists, chiropractors, physiotherapists, all service-based, like service-based businesses, um, 
like tradies, contractors, building companies, um, and real estate agents, mortgage brokers, all these types of niches. And um, real estate just made the most sense because the the transact like you, you, the result that you're helping a real estate agent achieve is a sale of a property, and they're making anywhere between you know eight thousand to thirty thousand dollars for on a commission for selling a property. And so, for us to be able to justify charging you know one thousand two thousand three thousand dollars a month for a service then it has to be like directly tangible and likely that obviously your client is and customer is going to mm. get an roi um and real estate just made the most sense because it was such like a high ticket result that they're having on the back end um mm. and it gave me the most amount of personal like conviction and confidence that yeah we can actually like help help these people because you know they get they list a property through you know the ads that we're running they're making you know ten to to thirty thousand dollars and they're going to be very very profitable and so it was just like it just made logically the most sense in terms of how much value we could add to those types of clients yeah that's a a powerful way of looking at it as well and like good on you as well for having that insight that early on yeah (laughs) because it's so easy to fall into the trap of selling shit to people that don't necessarily want it well yeah i mean because you can it's kind of like uh, like one of the things that Alex and Mosey says is that, you know, in sales, you want to sell the most ex- like uh, a more expensive thing. Higher because tickets possible. You can, you can, it, the same amount of time and effort goes into, mm-hmm. you know, a one hour sales call to sell something that's $100 versus selling something that's a million dollars. It's still yeah. an, hour of your, an hour of your time. And the same thing with providing services to social media marketing agency clients is like you can work with a gym where you're you're acquiring a customer that might be worth, you know, eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars a year, or you can acquire a customer for a different client type, like a real estate agent, where one customer is worth twelve, fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars. And mm. so, you're, it's all the same amount of effort that goes into acquiring that person as a client and fulfilling them and mm. setting up their ads and managing them. But one is outputting significant amount more value, and mm. therefore you can charge more and make more money. Yeah, and it's the customer satisfaction from like the agency side as well has the potential to be a lot higher. Like you yeah. said, you know, if you're charging them three thousand dollars a month and then you're pulling in thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a month, then that gap is equated to essentially your success and they look at your services at a lot higher ROI. You know, which as a business owner as well, that's that's what you want. Like I'm gonna speak for myself personally here, like I'm not in it just to make the money like i feel horrible if my client is unsatisfied yeah you know and it makes the makes the job really hard from an emotional level absolutely you know 100 percent. yeah wicked so you found the niche now talk us through the early steps now bear in mind like I, i want this to really hit home for maybe a few of the listeners who are in a similar position to what you were you know you had ambitions you were unsatisfied with jobs Try and give a, a, as much kind of context as possible to that initial phase, the things you came up against. Yeah. So, I think that um, one thing that in retrospect that mm. it, just that's a consistency about the general mindset of starting in, in any business is that there's so much uncertainty and mm. self-doubt and like even now, like, it doesn't change at all. Just different you're, levels. Yeah, it's just different levels. And so, you're always just, like, coming across new things where it's either a new skill you have to learn or a new thing that you have to implement where you've got no idea how to do it, how it's going to go, and you've get, you've just got <laughs> you've got no idea if something's, if something's going to work or not. And that's, like, the same thing as right, as right now. And it's just about learning how to get comfortable with taking action when you've got no real confidence in mm. something is going to work or not and you get you get more and more confident and so in the early in the early stages i mean like the practical way that we got things off the ground was literally just me cold calling real estate agencies and just mm-hmm. like pulling up google maps and looking at people's websites and mm-hmm. finding people's phone numbers and making a list on a on a google doc and starting to call them mm-hmm. And then requesting an in-person meeting. And that's how I got like my first seven clients. And, you know, we're charging $1,500 a month. And like once you've got seven clients, you're at like whatever that is, like 11, 12, 12K a month. And mm-hmm. so, that's like all I did to get get momentum and get things off the ground was just like cold call, in-person meeting, 
present do a presentation of what we could do for them in an in-person meeting and um I, I actually got like traction very very quickly like very luckily um literally the very first person that i ever cold called picked up and agreed to a meeting like the literally the first time that i'd like gone through all that effort i was like all right it's a good confidence I was like, first finally, i'm like finally i'm gonna, I'm gonna call someone i was ridiculously nervous i had no idea how it was gonna go and called them up and they were like yeah like come down like let's let's have a chat and i was like mm. oh shit okay now i've actually got to like do a sales call or do it. Yeah. and it was i wasn't even doing a sales call it was like presenting something to them in person and i literally remember i I I had my sales script printed out <laughs> and I brought it in, with me, in into the into the meeting and I I would have looked so stupid um but like that's how I was doing things mm-hmm. um and then I just kept doing that for a bit had got my first few clients and then you know just going through the motions of figuring all that out of like okay like once you've actually got actually got clients and that's why taking action is so important because it's very easy to put off the practical things that actually lead to lead mm-hmm. to growth and especially in the in the marketing agency business model like the majority of what you learn is just by actually fulfilling services for clients yeah. actually <laughs> just doing what, what your agency actually um actually does and so i just got into it very very quickly um got our first five to five to seven clients and then you just learn so much going through the process mm. of okay how do we actually get results for clients how do we run facebook ads how do we onboard onboard clients how do mm. we do client communication and um then it just snowballed from there then it's just like ongoing repetition of solving new problems of okay how do we how do we increase the amount of sales calls we're, we're booking and how mm. do we figure out those strategies and then once you sign more clients it's like okay how do we start to grow a team to manage more clients and then once you grow a team to manage more clients, it's like, okay, now how do we scale client acquisition even more because I can't take any more sales calls mm-hmm. and then it's, okay, how do we grow a sales team? And, and All the it, different levels yeah. and shit. Yeah. What was your initial offering then? Because, you know, you hadn't fulfilled on a client before. You've gone into that sales meeting. You've got the script in front of you. You're probably sweating profusely. Yeah. <laughs> like, what was your offering? Were you up front in your position and stuff like that. You yeah. say like, you know, I haven't done this before, but I'll work harder than anyone you've ever met. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, the the best strategy for getting clients when you don't have any case studies or testimonials or anything like that is I was just super transparent and just like, this is what I'm doing. I've never done this before, um, but this is the plan. This is the strategy. Mm-hmm. This is why we think it's it's going to work. Um, this is, you know, you can leverage the authority of the people that you're working with and the coaches and the mentors that you're that you're working with um you can one thing that's really really good is yeah just like leveraging other people's strategies and other people's authority you're not selling based on this is the, this is what we've made up you are comparing the a strategy to what other people are doing so you can say hey this is what mm. you know top performing agents in australia are doing and you can show them like hey this is the facebook ads that they're running this is how their strategy works this is how, this is how we want to do it for you, and so um, instead of just like selling a service completely from scratch, saying, "Hey, this is I'm just made up, <laughs> made yeah. up a system and a strategy, and I've never done this before," and do you want to have a crack at see, seeing how it goes? It's presenting something in the context of, "Hey, this is what the best performing people mm-hmm. in your industry are doing. This is what we've figured out how they're executing on that, and we want to do it for you," um, and that worked pretty well. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and I suppose your qualification process from, you know, in terms of the customers you want to work with, it's pretty straightforward. You know, if you've, if you're a real estate agent, you're currently selling houses, we can work with you. Yeah. You know? Pretty much like the, the only people that we don't work with are the real estate industry is a, uh, an interesting industry because it's relatively low barrier to entry to yeah. become a real estate agent and it's very attractive. It's like one of those industries where people kind of like make money online yeah. business models where people look at it from the outside like, oh, you know, people that are real estate agents make a lot of money and so a lot of people try and get into it um, and it's you can get a real estate license in two weeks. Yeah. And so- there's a lot of real estate professionals that aren't very good in, from a sales from a, a sales perspective, yeah. and so um, that's one of the big lessons that we learned getting into the space is that a lot of people it's really hard to get results for them because at the end of the day, like they have to actually be a good sales professional and be a good uh, be a good real estate agent, or else you can Just actually you know, close yeah, the sale. You, you can implement an incredible you know marketing strategy for them, um, but if they're not doing what they need to do as an agent, then they're not mm. going to get results, and so 
we've kind of created a, you know, an ideal client avatar of the markers to look for, for what mm-hmm. we know that, okay, if this person's in this position, if they're in this type of market, then we know mm-hmm. we can get results for them. Um, but it's very similar with like, you know, an e-com, an e-com um, marketing agency. Like you're not just going to take on any e-commerce business um, because there's a lot of like, there's so many e-com businesses out there that are doing horribly. And even if you implemented mm. Facebook ads, TikTok ads, YouTube ads, Google, Pinterest, whatever, it'd be hard to get results for them because maybe their product shit, maybe mm. they, you know, they don't have good margins or maybe their current online store conversion rate is, is horrible. And if you run ads to it, they're not going to get results. So yeah, just spend more money yeah. down the drain. Yeah. yeah. So like knowing who, who your ideal client is, is extremely important. Mm. So yeah. how did you deal with the, those clients that weren't performing on their end? How did that conversation go? Like, well, it's it's more of a a learning curve of not so much figuring out like it's just holding people accountable yeah. and calling them out on their on their bullshit and just going, Hey, like this is what it takes to get results. You're not doing that, so you're not gonna get the result. It's pretty simple. Um and then it's like internally in the business it's looking at, okay, well this is a problem. Mm-hmm. We've got people that are harder to get results for than others. Do we change what we're doing and create a product and solution to educate, coach, consult people, give people strategies and systems Mm -hmm. so that they can improve? Or do we just focus on servicing the types of clients that we already know are easier to get results with and are Mm. going to perform better? And so, that's the route that we went down because that's the path of least resistance and that's a lot more simple and efficient to have to create anything new or build any new products. And so, just work with people that are easier to to get results with. And so, and that ends up that's kind of like a side effect of the ben- of a benefit of focusing on offering premium products and services. And so, you can. It's easy to fall in the trap of um, struggling to scale a service when you're mm-hmm. working with kind of like the bottom tier of of a clientele, um, because the bottom tier of the of a clientele are usually the easiest to attract and acquire because it, that's where the majority of people are. Like the mm-hmm. majority of real estate professionals are not high performing and are not performing at the top um and so it's easier to capture clients that are, that are in in the majority but they're the hardest to fulfill and the hardest mm. to get results for and you can command the least amount of money from them because they're making less um, yeah. whereas if you're positioning a service as a premium service that's more ideal for high high performing top performing agents um then one you can command higher prices because you're providing a more valuable solution to a, mm. a high tier customer um, but then it's easier to get results for them because they're all someone that's already performing at a high level you're it's like it's way easier to take a uh, someone that's like a 7 out of 10 to a 9 out of 10 mm-hmm. than it is to take a 3 out of 10 to a 5 out of 10 yeah. you know what I mean so um, it's like the way that I've always kind of thought about making the different decisions in the in the business is what option is has the odds stacked most in your favor. So, it's like what option has the most, is just the most beneficial and has the most pros out Mm. of all the the options that you've got. And that's obviously going to be, going to be the best decision. Um, So, yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that's something that we learn through failure because like in the earlier stages of business, I personally was like, oh, this person wants to give me money cool like I'll, I'll service this person or they 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 want my services cool and i wasn't vetting the clients like like you said because i was just in need of clients yeah you know but then when you learn and you've also don't have the pressure of oh, i need to make this amount of money you can actually be more specific all right this is the kind of person i most enjoy serving this is the kind of person that we have the best results for we just yeah. lean into that particular avatar as you said so that's all the stuff that comes from taking action like you spoke about before we were talking about this topic like most of the things we learn in entrepreneurship come from the action that's taken not the books because i'm speaking from personal experience here like we can read things in a book or watch things in a course and there's always that little story going on in the back of my head it's like yeah but that won't work for me yeah you know, yeah, that's good for you because you know how to do it, but that won't work for me. But then when you go out and do the things and they sh- you show yourself, hey, this does work for me, then the certainty builds, then, you know, your ability to influence builds, you know. Yeah. So, you mentioned as well that you were thinking about, you know, 
employing other products to maybe help them with the sales and all that kind of stuff. Why did you decide to stay specific on your product offering and not branch out early on? Well, it was just kind of like those those two options. It's like one, we have to build a lot of new stuff. Yeah. Um, and then one, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> and so, it's that simple. It's like what requires like the three main principles that I think are most important for scaling in like these types of businesses, which is something that I've taken from a, f- from a few of my mentors is um, simplicity, efficiency, and profit. And so, mm-hmm. you should always be like making decisions through the lens of how could something be more simple? How could something be more efficient? And is it profitable? And so, one, like charging, working with more premium clients, charging more for services, mm-hmm. that's more profitable, tick. Efficient is doing more with less. So, mm-hmm. one option, we have to build a bunch of new stuff. Mm-hmm. One, we don't. So, let's just do the same thing with less. Mm-hmm. So, that ticks that box and then simple. It's kind of the, kind of the same thing. Like, why make things more complex, especially in business? Like, a, a complexity arises at scale by default. Like, mm-hmm. things get complex when you when the business grows. And so, if things, if things are already complex when you're not making much money, then that's a really bad thing and it's going to be really hard to scale and grow. And so, you don't want to be... Usually, adding complexity is never the solution when you're below, like, 50K a month. And so... That's that's why. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it makes perfect sense. Hey, especially when you're a one-person team. Yeah. You know, you can't swap in and out of the different roles as easily, especially when the core drivers are to focus on the needle movers in the business. Like, the most efficient use of your time is sales presentations. So, if you're spending all that time building other products that are pulling you away from your core offering, then you're just literally leaving money on the table, which is oxygen for, for a new business. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, talk us through, like, we're, we're at the point now in the story where, you know, you've got your first seven, um, you're making just over 10K a month. How did that feel for you? Like still being early in your entrepreneurial yeah. journey? Yeah, I I think it was that was like the it was just the personal realization of oh I can actually do this and like this is mm. possible and this is viable because I started getting traction with the agency kind of like in my final year of of university and I was at a bit of a crossroad where I was either going to look at getting some kind of job out of, out of uni so that I had something to do that was mm-hmm. a bit more stable while I was figuring figuring things out or I was going to continue with the agency which I which wasn't I didn't have that much certainty of if like I was actually going to be doing that full time I was like okay is this actually the thing that I'm going to be really really putting all my time and effort into and so for me once I crossed that that milestone in terms of income it was like more money than I'd ever ever made from anything else before and that's kind of a number that's really glorified in like the online business space as well it's like 10k a month and so I kind of was like fed in fed into that and that gave me a bit of pers- personal confidence I was like cool like I've done this I've hit this mm. milestone and so if I've if I've been able to do that then I think I can I think I can keep doing this and I think I can mm-hmm. make this work if I've done it once I can keep doing it so it was it was just that kind of sense of relief and confidence. I was like, okay, like I've actually been able to make this work. Um, and that gave me the clarity just to keep pushing and keep doing it. Because I think getting over those, getting that that first milestone, whatever you set it, whatever it mm. is for yourself that you've put on a bit of a pedestal that like that's the that's the, the milestone I need to achieve to um, to feel like I've, it's it's worth continuing. Mm. Um, that's, it's really important to kind of get, get past that because um, then you've got, yeah, then you've just got the drive and motivation to keep keep pushing with it. Yeah, and like all well and good, we're talking about kind of business success right now and you've got per- personal confidence with, from the business activities. And how was your social life? Because I personally, and early in my journey, I isolated myself in order to build this goal and mm. it had a negative side effect on me. So, going through this journey... Were you able to maintain balance, if that's even a thing? Or yeah, I think um, I think that that's something that I've been relatively good at, luckily. Yeah. And I think that um, definitely from influence from from my parents, like I've always really highly valued my personal time and like mm-hmm. my personal enjoyment. And like at the end of the day, that is 
that's the outcome that I want to enjoy from having a business. It's not something that I ever want to sacrifice. Mm. And so, there's definitely 100% periods where I've been like very locked down and very focused and yeah. not had a huge amount of a, a social life, but not for very long. And I've never like, I've never felt like I'm, I'm sacrificing yeah. a, a social life what's, whatsoever. And so, um, yeah, I don't like, I don't work crazy hard you know i because i really value like spending time with my girlfriend Mm. spending time with friends spending time with family going surfing going on trips traveling like that's why i do online business to create you know to create like the personal freedom that i want um so i've always i I feel like i've always balanced it relatively Mm. relatively well but it's definitely challenging like uh, but part of that i think was also part of my personality but part of my like personal standards i had for just work ethic in general like even when i when entrepreneurship wasn't in the picture i was always relatively like focused with uni work and getting through uni work mm-hmm. i was never um i've always been relatively like introverted as well and not wanting to always go out to social events and i prefer just like hanging out with small smaller groups of friends and mm-hmm. things like that um so i wasn't um, it wasn't something that I really had to struggle with, like, oh, yeah. like I'm, I'm stopping doing a lot of things that I yeah. wasn't already doing. So, I think that was part of it as well. Yeah. And the beautiful thing about the agency model is you do a little bit of work to set up an ad campaign yeah. and then that ad campaign continues to multiply that effort. You know, you're, yeah. you're building systems that work for you in lots of ways. And the same with the subscription model. You get a client once and as long as you're maintaining satisfaction and- like building, fostering that relationship with the client, they continue to pay you on a monthly basis. Yeah. Uh, Whereas in the past, I've had offerings that were, you know, one job here, then got to find another client, this job here, then got to find another client. And you spend all your time just on the hamster wheel of trying to find a client. Yes. You know, the side of the agency model is so ridiculously powerful because you get one client your first month, then another client in your second month, all of a sudden, you're now getting paid by two people. Yeah. And then you it compound and it compounds and compounds and compounds. It's so, that's really interesting for people who are wanting that kind of freedom lifestyle mm. that can kind of fulfill on business. And like, like you said, I'm glad you added that context there because when you sit down and work you're focused on yeah. what you're working on. So, therefore, you can have plenty of time where you don't have to be focused yeah. and you can live life essentially, right? Of course. Yeah. yeah. Was there ever a period of time where um, you were like battling procrastination or did because you had those wins early on, do you did you feel like you kind of got past that hump pretty quickly? Yeah. I mean, even, even recently, like- yeah. um, yeah, it's definitely like I've I've gone through a lot of ups and downs in terms of where my source of motivation is coming from um, for doing work because and this is something that I like actually put a lot of work into figuring out for myself and I saw kind of like a generalized mindset coach for like every single week for about for about six months mm-hmm. and um, because I like achieved uh, one thing that I that I kind of figured out is that. I didn't need to make anywhere near as much money as I thought I did to have like personal satisfaction and like live the life that I wanted to live. Okay. But I still wanted to work on growing the business significantly, but I was really finding it hard to show up in the business as much as I wanted to and just be motivated to work on it because I'd gotten really comfortable. Yeah. And I'd, yeah, I'd achieved a very comfortable lifestyle. Like once you get to about, 25 30k per month consistently there's not really much you can't like you mm. can't do other than like yeah there's lots of things that you can do but for, for me it was like not having to think about if i wanted to go eat out or not having mm. to think about you know what hotel i'm staying at or not having to think about booking booking um flights for for a holiday mm. and so once i kind of got to that to that level there was nowhere near as much um, they kind of talk about it as, as dirty goals. Like, it's like kind of superficial, mm-hmm. more materialistic goals, whereas um, more true goals are about 
are more in alignment with your with your personal passions and, and missions and the things that you really care about. And so, it's it's hard like figuring that out because those more initial superficial goals of like hitting a money a money milestone, that will only get you so far. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, I, I've had to go through the process of figuring out, okay, like what do I, why I'm actually building something in the first place or what's going to, what's the, the point of like mm. keep continuing to push. Um, and I think that procrastination is always like a side effect of some kind of deficit or lack of meaning in what you're actually working on. Mm. Real quick, before we wrap up the show, I want you to think back to a point in today's episode where you had that aha moment where you got absolute certainty. You're like, I know exactly what I need to do now moving forward. And then I want you to remember how you found out about this show. Was it on someone's story? Was it a conversation with a friend maybe? Then I want you to go ahead and pay it forward. Because the way that the law of reciprocity works is that by introducing someone to something of value, they will always equate you with that value. Now, you guys know I don't run ads to this show. Everything is grown 100% organically, word of mouth. Now, if you want to play a part in the growth of this show, bigger guests, better stories, more content, and you want to gift that aha moment to more people all across the world, go ahead and pay it forward. It costs you nothing but it could be priceless to someone who needs it. All right. So, before we move into a wrap up, give us a little bit of context as to how you found that meaning, how you kind of pinpoint where that motivation was coming from. Yeah. Well, I don't I don't feel whatsoever like I've found my grand meaning of like yeah. <laughs> existence and like yeah. I'm like, yeah, I know what the meaning I'm of my life is. found your calling. No, no, definitely not. But I think I've just gotten a better understanding of um of what matters and like what to okay. actually what what to look for and so just even having that understanding of going okay you know buying the the car that you want or like hitting a certain number in your in your bank account like that's not actually going to motivate you enough to really take action and show mm-hmm. up in the business the, the way that, the way that you want to um and you have to you have to create different things that are more meaningful and impactful to you and so for me, it's more like a, a an outcome of a feeling of just like the type of the type of life that I want to live. It's not mm-hmm. necessarily a specific like materialistic thing, or like I said, a specific number in the bank account, or like mm-hmm. a, a revenue a revenue milestone. It's um, an amount of impact that I that I want to have. It's um, the the level of kind of wealth and freedom that I want to create for myself and and my family. Mm. And so, it's not like I said, like I have not, I've definitely not found what like my grand purpose is Mm. whatsoever, but I've just kind of gotten closer to understanding what is and isn't important as much. Yeah. Yeah. What is the impact you want to have? Um, I think like the main thing that I'm most passionate about is, is exposing more people to, um making people more confident to just take to take action for creating something for them for themselves and getting into any type of online business that can create freedom for themselves because i think that the i just know that there's so many people that don't like what they do Mm. but don't actually think it's viable to pursue something for themselves um and i've kind of gone through that personal journey myself of not wanting to and knowing what I don't want to do and then doing it mm. and then being fed up with it and then creating something for myself and then experiencing that transition and how much better life is like that mm. just having that level of freedom I mean like you know it's a Thursday morning and I'm able to just like randomly come to a podcast like this right now and have mm. complete control over my time and my schedule and you know, for the past like three months I've just I've been overseas for the past three months being in random countries and having incredible experiences and I and every time I like come home and I speak to like people from high school or speak to people that I was at uni with like they have no freedom like they're mm. like I when I, when I like I can't make plans with friends because they just have no freedom and you have to like find new friends that are doing the same things mm. um, and so like life is just honestly so much better <laughs> in when you mm. when you're doing it this way and yeah. it's like I want to help more people realize that and be able to achieve that. Mm. And what you said before as well about once you hit that twenty five to thirty thousand dollar mark, like 
uh, a month that is like a lifestyle of total freedom you yeah. know and if you've got the road like you're doing 80k a month right now you you've got the road map map to help people if they're willing to take action to do that and i feel like that kind of impact would be extremely fulfilling to see all those wins in your community people that have you know joined your programs that have started in the position you were in yeah. and now they're in a position you're somewhat in now as yeah. well yeah 100 percent. like some of the yeah some of the most like impactful things for me is you know meeting some of the people that i've i've helped build their business and like them yeah. telling me that like you've changed my life and that that's just like a really strange thing mm. it's like wow like that's actually really cool um, mm. I'm, I'm i'm proud of that and um and it's really satisfying mm. to help to help people achieve that so i've had uh, dylan marley on, yeah. on the podcast yeah yeah <laughs> one of your um i don't know what you'd call the mentees yeah. or something yeah he's been in one of my programs um and he, he said the same kind of thing you know he was working in a factory fucking hated it and that pain drove him to all right surely there's something else out there and that pain drove action yeah. and now he is loving life he's building out a team he's got complete freedom you know his mindset and his body is in full coherence and he is really satisfied and fulfilled with life he can bring his family over from fiji or something yeah, yeah. bring his family over so that they can he can see them often like you know the the level of impact that he is now able to ripple into his family life and into his friend life is just something that continues to be passed down and you know we never know there might be a sister or a brother or a younger cousin of his that looks up to dylan and goes mm. oh, i can start an online business and i never have to get trapped in the rat race yeah you know and it's just like a, a ripple effect which is super super powerful hey yeah yeah 100 percent. wicked yeah. so final question for you mm -hmm. If you could have dinner with one person, mm. alive or dead, who would it be? What would you want to learn from them? Alive or dead? Alive or dead. <laughs> so, they're alive while they're speaking to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The dead one is tricky because that just, that just opens up way too many options. Yeah. Like, the first thing that comes to mind would probably be Elon Musk mm. just because he's by far just the most yeah. <laughs> on the most cutting edge level of mm. business entrepreneurship. Just everything is. I feel like a conversation with him would take you in a complete different trajectory. Yeah. Huh? yeah. And I think that would just learn so, so much. And I think he's just on a com so, so much of a higher level than literally anyone, anyone else that, um, he seems to have, yeah, he, he's kind of just like one of those characters that are similar to, mm -hmm. you, yeah, similar to many like historical, historical figures in, in history. And so, probably at this point, it'd be, it'd be Elon. Um, and what would I ask him? I don't know. I'd, I'd want to, I'd want to have a very long conversation mm. with him. Um, oh, it's, it's so, yeah, it's so. It, it would be. Like, I think you'd learn so much just from his come up story. Yeah. You know, the same reason why I love focusing on the early stages in this podcast is because that's where true colors are shown. You know, I'm sure like when he was building X.com, which turned into PayPal, yeah. like there would have been lots of things that he came up against that would provide really, really solid value to us. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, talk about all the futuristic shit he's doing as well, but just to get an understanding to how that mind was built would be powerful. Yeah. And like, cause he's the type of person that has been on so many podcasts and like, I've listened to so many podcasts of him and have heard so many questions being asked to him. And so it's like, what question would I ask him? It's mm. like, well, what, what hasn't he been asked mm. or, already? And I think I'd just probably ask him lots of why questions about decisions that he's, he's made. It's mm -hmm. just like, why did you buy a Twitter? And then, like, just asking follow-up why questions. It's like, okay, well, then why? Why was that? Why important? did you fire just yeah. about everyone straight why away? Did you do that? Why did you do that? Why did you do that? I just ask a lot, a lot of why questions because yeah. those are the usually in, um, like, in sales or in um, one thing that's consistent in sales and in one thing that we learned at university for like developing strategies for advertising campaigns and things like that is you know in sales you just ask people continued why it's like why why are you trying to achieve this outcome mm -hmm. okay well like why is that important and okay well why is that thing that's important why is that important to yeah. you and you just like keep asking why questions to get to the core of and usually i think there's a rule it's like if you ask someone 
why five times, you kind of get to the real reason of what their, what their answer is. And it's the same in when you're developing um, an advertising strategy, you like survey customers and you like ask them consecutive why mm. questions. And so, I think that, that that's kind of just like a little like rule of thumb that I've always used to... Um, to talk to people and to get to get insights from people is just continue to mm-hmm. ask them why, um, and so I'd probably do that with with Elon. Is just keep asking him why to to kind of get to the core of what his what makes him tick. Mm, fuck, I want to be there for that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We could do well. I, I've had a blast. Thank you for sharing sharing your value with us. Um, thank you Absolutely. for sharing your time. Um, I'm glad we could make this happen. Yeah, appreciate you having me on. Awesome. All right, everybody. I will drop all Liam's links down below. Um, his social media. I'll link the program. Uh, if you're a real estate agent and you want some leads, I'll drop <laughs> that link below as well. Oh. Uh, if you are having trouble finding that subscribe button. It's usually in a pretty bright color. So just look a little bit closer, press that, make sure you tune into every episode because I cover a large breadth of topics. Um, everything from art, psychedelics, space, digital marketing, e-commerce. I'm a curious person. I want to share that curiosity with you guys. So come along for the journey. I don't run ads. I grow this podcast organically with the help of you guys. So if you're getting value from this, Send some of that value back our way so we continue to grow this show. Um, also, leave five stars if you enjoyed this episode. Liam, did you enjoy this episode? I did. It Fuck was very <laughs> Awesome, guys. All right, love you. I will catch you guys next week. Peace. Okay. Woo.